Hello, and welcome to the Libri Lover Book Club. This afternoon, we're going to be talking about the last book we read, which is We Were the Lucky Ones by Georgia Hunter. Give me one second. Um, of course, this is going to be like an in-depth discussion, so there are going to be spoilers. I mean, I don't know if spoilers is even really the right word, since this is based most, mostly on um, true stories uh, about a family that was kind of living through the uh, the beginning of World War II and then what happened to them after the war, stuff like that. So this was my nomination. Um, and... I don't know. I, like, I, I wouldn't say that um, World War II or or that kind of stuff really interests me, but I think I was just, like, on Amazon purchasing books, and I happened to come across this one, which had five stars. And, like, it had a ton of five stars. And I was like, well, if that many people think it's really good, then I should probably pick it up. Um, I am really glad that we read it, though. I don't know if right now it was the best time to be reading it. I think it was, like, just kind of hard um just hard it's just hard right now <laughs> with the current political climate yeah it just with seems the like current, it was uh, it's just um, it gave us a lot of anxiety just you know I, I wasn't around during then and although i know the holocaust existed and things that happened i don't there's just like this sense of detachment that exists and uh but seeing it through the eyes of, of this particular family it's just it's hard to imagine that that we can dehumanize people to that level um but here we are here we are uh so do you want to go with initial thoughts did i say yeah i did say there was gonna be lots of spoilers initial thoughts um i think i enjoyed it for the the uh enlightening aspect of it. It just, you, I learned something from it versus, uh, I didn't, uh, it was a great story. It was told really well. It was just, but I think I just, I was like, this is, this happened. And it was kind of actually putting the, the strings together and what, what happened in certain areas. It was kind of nice, but uh, I do feel bad for the family, but they were the lucky ones. I mean, the entire family came out. They just came out. They just, it's, it, it they made it through, and that's uh, very few. Ha that's very few families had that happen. It might have been the only one. I feel like um, this book would have benefited from a family tree being <laughs> included in it. Um, there was some like the chapters kind of alternate perspectives between characters, and I think there were a few times that we were like, "Are we still going in like chronological time?" Like I, we weren't sure if it was. Was it linear? From Hmm? Yes, it was linear. Yeah, yeah it was I thought linear. so. So, but because of the different perspectives, we were getting a little bit lost, and sometimes we're like, "Okay, is this still going forward in time?" Um, mm -hmm. So, I feel like that family tree would have really helped to separate the characters. I don't know for whatever reason, there was just like a three of the female characters that I was like, "Wait, who is this again?" Yes. Well, yeah, who is she married to? Who's her kid? Like, and so that was a little confusing. Um, so that family tree would have been perfect. Well, um, we listen to the audio book. You try to follow along in the book every once in a while, but at mm -hmm. the beginning of each chapter, it actually told you who, who it was. Who yeah, it was, yeah. but the audio book didn't read those those titles. Are you sure? Yeah. Tom, is that accurate? I felt like they did. I felt like they were like nineteen. I think, blah, I think they did. Yeah. Did they? Yeah, they would say the name and then the location and then the year. Oh, yeah, that's true. I guess, yes. I, I, guess I, just, I didn't catch you didn't that. Catch that, yeah. Because, because the play stands were like so freaking long when they go, and now we're in Soviet occupied Lvov. It's like, okay, yeah, I got it. I understood that guy, but when yeah. I, I guess I didn't catch the narration whenever they were like, okay, this is who we're following now. Yes, they did. Okay. And, yeah, I, so remember I, remember, I remember looking at the book a couple times, being like, hey, wait a minute. I didn't, catch, I didn't hear them say this. Yeah. But I guess it just, oops. It's missed it. Um, and I think the first chapter started with Addie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Addie is actually the grandfather of the author. And right. and so it would make sense that the She's Felicia's go. daughter, if I recall. Now, is that right? I think so. Mm -hmm. 
No, no. No, that would make her Mila's. No, it was Catherine's. Yeah, Catherine's yeah. daughter. Caroline's. Caroline's, yeah, Caroline's. So Caroline, yeah. Catherine. So yeah, Catherine's daughter. Yeah, you're right. Okay, carry on. Correct. <laughs> that family tree, man. Um, so. You know, and I think one of the really interesting things is that she says, you know, all her life, she never thought of her grandfather as anything other than American. And that, you know, even though he had these little quirks that she never, ever stopped to consider where they came from or what his past was or or anything like that, that it wasn't until after his death and after that family reunion that she really started putting those pieces together. And I can kind of relate to that in a way. I know when my godfather had passed away, I was in charge of kind of going through all of his things and emptying out his apartment. And there was like what? so much of him that I learned about and discovered. Mm-hmm. And it was just very eye opening. So I can relate to that experience. Um, but uh, there was just, I think probably the most interesting thing and the thing that I kept asking myself and asking John is, would we be hiding people? Would we be risking ourselves to to hide Jews had we right. been in that in that situation? Well, now we're in with our current political climate. Now it's Hispanics that are being pointed out, and you are one. So I figured we would be helping if there's you know either family or. Um, and it, I mean, just why not? I mean, of, of course, like you would want to. I don't know who wants to. Nobody wants to lose their life. It's just, it's just interesting, <laughs> interesting to consider and think about. And not just that, but like you know, one of the things that with, with what's happening politically right now is you have mm-hmm. these people that are saying, you know, they're they're human. They're trying to escape their own governments where things are totally going wrong and and then you have the people that are like well they need to come in legally they need to abide by the law oh my god and you know as soon as our lives are on the line mm-hmm. the law becomes a completely different thing you know when you're like trying to survive the human nature and the human spirit like you know what's what's a silly law mm-hmm in that respect so but it's it's just incredible how how vig- like i can't imagine living under those conditions and always being afraid like with getting the fake ids that they had to do and lying to their employers mm-hmm. and just anxiety for like pretty much a decade they were living in fear and hiding and mm-hmm. So sad. My anxiety. <laughs> it's like mm. it's just a lot. I can't okay. imagine. Let's talk about the book, not our current political climate. Okay, tell them what are your initial thoughts. Um, well, you kind of pointed out one was that um, I wish that uh, we had a little bit more backstory to the characters before the war started, so that you could keep better track of who they were. Because to me, in some places, it seemed like, oh, we could just interchange these people, like, and put them in different situations. It's, it's, it's what's happening to them that's important, not necessarily the characters themselves. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. How many siblings did Addy even have? It was Genic, Mila, Helena. At least that I can remember. What? Who is Jakob? Jakob. Jakob. Okay. Yeah. So those are the five. So, but it, like you know, I mean, it starts well. Helena could have easily been in Addie's place, and Addie could, you know, there wasn't any like real. I mean, yes, I understand. Yeah, you know, Addie was in Paris, and he's a musician and all, but so was Helena. You know, like you know, she could have equally been in that. You know, but likely in the family record, she wasn't, and that's why she wasn't. But we we don't have that information, right? It just seemed, it just seemed to me that oh yeah, well you know, this this thing has to happen to this person. Who's it going to be? As opposed to you know, 
oh, this person is a musician. And, and they do mention it. Genick is the engineer and, and whatnot. You know, he fixes radios and whatnot. But it doesn't really play that much part of a story. Right. So, so like you said, I had a problem. Okay, who are we talking about now? And, okay, and who has the kid? And, you know, it was a little bit tough to keep track of. So, plus, I would like to see how the war or the events of the war changed them. You know, like, so we have, it, it could have been, like, maybe 100 pages longer and then, like, had, like, pre-war. Like, right. say, through the 1930s and said, you know, so we could grow accustomed to them and then put them into this. Get a little bit more attachment to each of the characters. Right, exactly. I get it. Yeah, it's a good way to, good way to do that. Yeah, it's like um, when we did the uh, little fires everywhere. That was one of the strong points. I, I know people that, oh, it's so freaking slow to start. But it really helps you to get to know the character so that... When a they lot get of the books are part. slow to start for that reason. I mean, yeah. you, you do have to get the backstory a little bit of the... There is a family <laughs> tree. What kind of... Amazing. You find the camera's up there. You find when you look. The camera's up there. Yeah, I, oh I can see my it. god, that's so funny. There's glare, but yeah, I see it. <laughs> I see it. Well done. We had started the audiobook, so I didn't even like. Hey, look, it's a family tree. I apologize. There is a family tree in the book. But, um, it's like, you know, when, oh, when, like, when they're talking about Felicia, it's like, okay, Felicia's Mila's kid, right? And, right. And, and Bella is Jake. Well, who's Anna? You know? <laughs> Wait, who is Anna? Yeah, who is Anna? Anna is Bella's sister. Oh, okay. And Bella was married to Jacob. See, Jacob, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. This is exactly what I'm talking right. about. Right. There was somebody else. Herta. Not not Herta. There's somebody uh, else who's, whose name started with an F. And I wasn't sure how she was like connected to everybody. I don't know if she was somebody's friend or somebody's cousin. Franca. Franca. Yeah, yeah. Who was? She's a cousin, I think. Okay. Yeah. Of one of them. Yeah. That was Mila's cousin. They're all, they, they're all cousins, I guess. Yeah. It was a cousin. Are they the two that set off through the? the yes. The creek or the water or whatever. Yes, and the one fell in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The basket. Yeah. And that well, and that's and that's the other thing they, which they do, which, um, you know, Franca eventually get. They don't say how, but Franca survives the war, and I don't think they, I don't think they say they say exactly how, but then they come up with other relatives that we had. They mentioned nowhere else in the novel. It's like, okay, are you talking um, about the 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 author's afterthought? Like, you know, well, we, yeah, like toward, uh, toward the end, like, yeah, like in the last chapter of the book, it's like, oh yeah, and then these guys survive. And it's like, well. So they were like, oh, 15 of my family survived, survived the war, but we only talked about 11. Yeah. So, and I, I, get, I get why, but by the same token, it's like, why mention my, I don't know. It's... Uh, I, for statistics, I mean, yeah. what, 15 out of 300 made it out alive? Mm -hmm. That's insane. So. I think what's, <clears throat> you know, you're reading a book, it's a few hours. So trying to process that, like, years yeah. went by for them. Just the idea that they didn't know. They didn't know where each other were. They didn't know if they were still alive. Oh, the like anxiety that. throughout yeah, all I of can't. that. Oh, my God. <clears throat> like, at one point, Six I guess when... Six years, uh, you didn't know where your husband was. When, yeah, when Mila discovers that Selen is still alive. Life, yeah. And she's like, I, I thought he was dead. I don't know I how to feel about him. this. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, I just, I can't imagine. I mean, I love you, but after six <laughs> years, I don't know, man. <laughs> so, hypothetically, if you disappear for six years. And... <laughs> like, I don't know if I could stay hoping, well, he's going to come back one day. Like, I just, like, yeah. how can you? She, no, she's going to write me off, like, within the first two years. <laughs> yeah. John, John who? I did, yeah. I had a husband once. <laughs> <laughs> like a farmer. <laughs> I had a farm in Africa. Yeah. You let me know how long you'd want me to wait, and I promise to wait that long. <laughs> I just, whatever, wait as long as you're comfortable, man. You just like, I don't know what's going on. Fuck this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, whatever. I mean, but, but, it, but for, to like, to deal with anxiety, I feel like the only thing you could do, because anxiety for me is like indecision 
and um, that in-between feeling. Because once I decide something and I head in a path, then the anxiety mm -hmm. subsides. It's that I have control over something or maybe I want control over something. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Sure. So to deal with that. She'll write me off real quick. I, I feel like to deal with that, I would have to. I'd be like, okay, I'm just going to accept that he's dead and move on with my yeah. life. And I'm going to come back and be all like, well, all right. Yeah. <laughs> but the other thing too is, you know, in the time this was written, the fastest medium of communication was either the telephone or the telegram. You know, past that. And if you, you don't have contact line, anybody, on letters, it's like, yeah. No clue when they moved, whether or not they moved, anything like that, and whether or not the, your letters are actually getting to where they're supposed to be going. Mm -hmm. So. I'm surprised that any of their letters got where they were supposed to be. I, thought, I was like, I was surprised. Like, holy shit, there you go. Mail <laughs> out there. I would have, like, Apparently. expected all of their mail to get intercepted. Mm -hmm. So, like, but... Somebody in Gilead would have had their hopes. In <laughs> Gilead. Yeah. But, um, you know, still, it could have been years in between. It's just like, I'll write soon. <laughs> I don't hear back to, like, a year later. That's... Um. And also, what makes uh, to me what makes this book notable is what's not in it is that it does not feature a concentration camp. They talk about them and people get sent to them, but none of them actually make it into one. And I thought that was interesting. Who was I don't remember who it was, but it was a couple I think that ended up on the the cattle train. Yes. Who was that? Because that I wasn't... think it was Anna's. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, the parents and her brother, I think. Bill, I mean, Bill and Anna's father, and, uh, father, mother, and brother, I think. But wasn't That's, that train essentially taking them to a concentration camp? It, which one? The one that, um, I remember, Mila was on or the one that... No, not the one Mila was on. Okay. It was somebody else because she was talking about how, like, a mother lost her baby and they just chucked the baby off the train. No, I think that was the one. That was me. That was what Mila and Felicia were on, wasn't it? Oh no, no, no. no. Oh, there's, no there's two trains. That was, yeah, that was um. Jacob and Bella, when they yeah. were getting sent to Siberia. Yeah. Sorry, I thought they were being taken to. Well, I I don't know. I think that's more of a work camp than a extermination camp. Mm. So yeah, splitting hairs really, really finely there, but right. Yeah. Well, their their ghettos were like the start of you know their concentration camps. Like they put like they, they they all that all that was controlled and put together. But then um, like there were well, there's there were two main places that they actually started like pushing them in there from right. other places. Mm -hmm. Like it was like a it was a chain. So yeah. they got here first, and then they got here, and then they made it to the concentration camp where they were all exterminated. They were just right. you go that way and get gassed. Mm. Ah, so disgusting! Oh my god. And in fact, they make mention of how they started, um, like, experimenting with the gases and such. And the one where um, the train the Mila was on, that's how they started with the, with the ex you know, they just started executing people. You know, having dig the... Their own uh, graves. Yeah, their own graves. And, they, you know, we line them up and then shoot them and that's it. But that, that apparently wasn't quick enough. So they have these trucks that they use, you know, with the gases and they, you know, Jews in there, gas them, and then, and, but that still wasn't quick enough. So now we have to have, you know, it's like, well, there was a uh, one description where they were piling up the bodies, and when the bodies got too high, they threw oil on them and burnt them. Or, yeah. and the other, other, other version was what they would actually roll them down the hill into the river. Mm -hmm. They're just throwing bodies into the river. Yeah. So, but like, just shows. What the what what doesn't what gets me is that how like all of these all of these people actually doing the killing you know like the the orders are coming down a, a line and yet there's still people in there that be like well they they've already they must have already dehumanized them to the entire populace like mm -hmm. it's it's that's ridiculous to th to have like just knowing that this <coughs> somebody's just killing hundreds of people and not even caring. Well, I mean, but if you think about it, like, we train soldiers to act and follow orders without asking questions. Like, and without having emotion. Like, that's why they called jarheads. Mm -hmm. 
But then you have to also consider the case where the soldiers actually want to carry out the orders. Yep. So that's the scary shit right there. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> um, I read a book called um, "Man's Search for Meaning." Oh, I I Eckhart Tolle. Yeah, I've. Um, so it was about someone who was in concentration camps, and I think he got out and later became like a psychologist or something, mm-hmm. if I remember correctly. But he was talking about. Uh, that sense of detachment and he was talking about the Nazis and how some of them, you know, wanted to follow the orders and they felt powerful and this, that, and the other thing. But then occasionally he would come across one that he could tell, you know, felt bad. And Mm -hmm. occasionally they'd sneak him a piece of chocolate or just like, you know, they would try to do something nice, but they were still in there, you know, like, Mm -hmm. so it was just kind of interesting to see. Uh, the analysis of what he was talking about, how how people com- compartmentalize things and uh, and they just follow along. Mm-hmm. So that was, an, was a good book. I thought short. On a on a related note, uh, one of the books I read this is a while ago it was a memoir of the Commandant of Auschwitz. Um, Hearst, I think, is his name. And it, was, it wasn't it was like he was like this raging, oh, I'm going to, you know, raging anti-Semite. It's just, yeah, this is what I do. I go to work and I do this, like, day to day to day. It's like, yeah, we have to make sure that we have to keep the extermination numbers up. It's like, how do you, that's even almost worse than, you know. They're like, oh, I have a quota to meet. Yeah, exactly. I was like, oh, my God. It, 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 <coughs> very, it makes a very interesting reading. But, yeah. Ugh. <laughs> the, the, other, the, other, hmm? the other things I can think of is if you, if you have if you've seen the film Baraka, mm-hmm. I've heard of it. I haven't really, seen it. Really, really good. Um, they they it's wordless, and they just show scenes from around the world. And one of them, it's like they do mass murder scenes, and like one was like from Pol Pot, you know, the Khmer Rouge and such in Cambodia, and whatnot. So, so very interesting. It's not just the Germans that you know doing this kind of stuff so which is disturbing and the other one i don't want us to be put in that bowl yeah hey i've never been one too much into history just because i feel like i don't know i guess maybe just living in america i was like well that's not going to happen now like i don't know maybe it's just um i felt like ignorance was bliss but um this definitely made me want to look more into mm-hmm. things that have happened and and like after i finished reading this i kind of started searching to see if there were any good books on like hitler because i I'm, I'm curious as to what the hell he was thinking or what started that or like yeah what i just want to know i, I feel like i have so things. many questions well i mean he <clears throat> i think didn't you bring up the fact that he grew up and he had issues. It's just that he grew up poor. That he grew up. That he grew right. up really but poor, and then he the was Jews like, he blamed the Jews that, for having. Yeah, but all he the wasn't the only one. Anti-Semitism has been around for a much longer time than Hitler was ever here. Right. So and look at the Spanish where did he, That's it had to be some. He got it. Had to get it from somewhere. It just yeah. doesn't just. Oh, there it is. Right. So. Oh, that's a whole history. I mean, you know. One of the things I noticed was interesting is that how they keep their Hebrew names to their self, to themselves. They just use you know their their common everyday names out among the populace. So I, just, I think one was Sarah, and I can't remember what the other ones were. So I guess Addie's middle name was Adolf. I got I got the impression his first name was his actual name was Ad, Adolf. Well, we're A-D-D-I. Oh, okay, Adolf Abraham. Yeah, Addie. I don't know. And then Kirik was his last name, so or Kirk or whatever. Or Kurtz. I don't. I don't know Kurtz. what the I was. Kurtz. That's, that's the narrative. <clears throat> but I don't know if she's written anything else. I don't know if I've heard. No, of... this is her debut, actually. Oh, which okay. Well, then. Been on her for a very good debut. Well, when you talk about your family as the debut book, I mean, makes sense to me. What makes sense to you? That. Well, unless you wrote something previously 
and then this came out and then what made her name but i just yeah but write then, about your family i mean that's usually gonna be the first book you do right yeah but look at the the one that we read um what the hell is it? not brain on fire the other one about the patient m yeah, HM. that's what I was that's thinking of. That's how not to write a book about family. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is how to write a book about family. I don't know. I like patient HM. Oh. Uh, I mean, it has its merits, but it's like, you know, and why, why I still remember, oh, and this is when I took my daughter's degree. It's like, who gives a damn? <laughs> you know? All right. And I, I get the point you're making, but still. At any rate, nah, it was really well put together, and I would say it's a damn, it's that's some damn good writing in that book. If if it's you know a a, a a product of you going back and searching of your family history and learning all of this stuff, and then you put it into a book to tell the story, that's 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 kind of amazing to me. Yes, and I, I mean, and you I, do it well. Yes, I was gonna say, yeah, you know, I'm sure that. Um, there are a lot of stories like this from the Holocaust that are people are trying to write and make into novels and such, but they haven't made it to the point where this author has. Right. So there must be something to this author's approach that you know. It's well, that, telling yeah. telling about one person's story might be a little bit more eh, over telling eleven or fifteen people's stories all at once. I don't know. And actually how they all freaking made it through individually and then came together at the end. That's, I mean, that's. All right. Well, let, let me ask you this. Have you read um, or seen, because it's a movie I, I understand too, The Boy in the Straight Pajamas? No. I would suggest it. Okay. So. I think, because from what I've heard, just being within the community, a lot of people don't like shifting perspectives. Like it's usually, like I've even heard from I authors that they've heard that mm -hmm. those don't really sell that well when they're trying to pitch it to agents and stuff. They don't want that dual. Well, uh, it means extra effort there. for the reader. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the, the usual thing is, well, why do we need this? We don't need this. You know, we could do it in a well. I don't think it could have been done without the, not this story. I think yeah. it would have been a rather more, I don't know, cumbersome. I'm glad she chose to make it more of a story instead of just um, purely nonfiction. Yeah. Um, well, that's well, kind of what I was saying earlier, is that the, is the fact that she took all that information and made a story out of it yes. versus, you know, like, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. Well, and, and I've seen it labeled as historical fiction, and, you know, good on her for that, but, you know, it seems like a lot of this is... <laughs> Fact, like family right. fact that they, you know. <clears throat> so, like I, I had guess that's how the best historical fiction is written. I had posted oh. in our uh, discussion board on Goodreads a link mm -hmm. where she was being interviewed, and she was just saying that she, like, you know, may have fluffed up like very, very minor details just to kind of keep the flow in the exchange. But for the most part, like everything else was pure research. So yesterday we were like finishing up the book, and mm -hmm. we got to the part about. Private Wojtek? Wojtek? Bear? Yeah, yeah. bear. Wojtek, private Wojtek the bear, yeah. <laughs> my favorite part. Hey, and this is a bear? I was like, this is so crazy that I feel like it has to be real. So, <laughs> I Because like, why not, right? <laughs> it's just like... It's like, why can't we do shit like that, man? But, I mean, during the World War, just, you gotta do what you can. Mm -hmm. And if you got a bear hanging out with you and following somebody around, I mean, why not use them for... the? I just like how they how they justified enlisting him to pay for his rations. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's like we gotta feed this thing somehow. How do we do this? But the idea of like a bear just lugging around ammunition in the war is just like mm -hmm. and, and saluting people. <laughs> yeah. Well living. <laughs> I don't understand. But that that's certainly one of the more um both spanning arcs in the in the book is um, Genix. Because, you know, he starts in Poland and, excuse me, you know, just because he doesn't check a box on his lease, we, oh, we're going to deport you to Siberia now. You know, and then all of a sudden, well, 
well, now, so, now Stalin and Hitler are enemies, not friends. So we want you to fight for, you know, the Allies. But we don't want to give you the equipment and stuff. So we're going to pawn you off on the British. So now you're going to go to Egypt and, like, you know, Palestine. And then we're going to send you to Italy, where guess what? You're like the front column in assaulting Monte Cassino. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, that's the whole know, story. Insane, yeah. So, so Addy pretty much got out like super early, right before. Yeah. Yeah. You know. He, he got to out Brazil. to Rio de Janeiro, yeah. And well, I don't know. I thought I thought it was funny. Well, isn't that nice? You got this nice young, rich, hot girl to go with. To, <laughs> you know. Oh, the check. Yeah. Yeah. Rishka. But. It, I just I thought it was interesting how they they broke that relationship like mm -hmm. like it was like oh she she realized that you know while he's caught up and worrying about his family they're not going to get married so mm -hmm. and then that was it like there was no <laughs> no other explanation outside of that like it was just like what happened what, I was what, like wait why is he eyeing this chick Catherine what's going on but the, but they didn't need one it's like it was it was just one of those things just to happen during the war you know and that's I thought that was. So, then he found Carolyn, of course. Yep. Yeah, let because his friend wanted him to go to that party, and yeah. Oh, man. The uh, the narrator of the audiobook did a good job with the characters, yes. too, by the way. Yeah, doing all those freaking accents. And I also, and I also made, uh, made fun of the American accent so much, too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, Caroline, that's cute. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, at least she didn't I, I, play sure it the, like that. I'm sure the narrator is like, does she have to be southern? <laughs> <laughs> Caroline. Caroline from South Carolina. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> really? But I mean, I guess. I mean, her name wasn't changed. I think who's Bella's name was changed. Yeah, a lot of people's names were changed. Eddie changed his name to Eddie. No, but he changed his name. That's different than like. Oh, oh, oh. The, the author the, changed no, the, the characters in the book, because she said that um, Mila and, Mia and Mila would be too close and they'd be too confusing for the right. reader. Which, fair point. So right. they changed it. Yeah. It happens. And I'm glad she did that because I would have been confused. <laughs> <It'd> be <worse>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, wait, which one of those are we talking about now? Mm -hmm. And Bella was the Yakov. Yes. Okay. Who was Pull the out the tree. Well, I don't think it has Bella in this. It does. It says married underneath their name. Should. Who they marry and who they had kids with? Yeah. I mean, it's not that uh, detailed of a tree. If they had Yosef, Mila, Mary, oh, okay, so Jacob, Bella. Yeah. Okay. Halina. See? Wait. What? Okay. So Halina and Mila. Yeah, I, I was confusing them for some reason. Yeah. So it was Halina with Adam. I thought it was interesting how Mila became the leader of the family, like, at the end. Like, toward, you know, after the war, she essentially took over the family and said, all right, we're going to have to march across the Alps and get into Italy and, you know, go to see uh, Gennick and such. So, A lot of brave people. Mm-hmm. Tell you what. I'm glad we read this though because I don't think you would have read something like that otherwise. Uh, no, probably not. <laughs> There's a lot of books I probably would not have read if you know if, if you didn't twist my arm. <laughs> what is he's honest? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was. I think the thing was like one of the first books she got me to read, and she had, uh, she's like, "You don't mm -hmm. read? What is wrong with you?" And I'm like, "Ah, mm -hmm. my parents never freaking here. Here's a book." No, you were like, I don't read. And I was like, no, you're just not reading the right books, John. Well, I'm not telling you. <laughs> I don't read. No, screw you. I don't <laughs> read. Ew. Words suck. Ew. <laughs> Who reads uh, books? Eh. I got him to read Harry Potter first. And he was like, these books are so big. I was like, don't worry. Just read. Yeah, I was a kid, read. man. Mm -hmm. I was a kid. They were like, oh, look how thick this is. This is going to take me forever. And I'm all like, <laughs> <laughs> Nah, since we found audiobooks, it's a lot easier to absorb. Because I'm not a, like I said, I'm not a reader. I don't, like, 
I, I, I could probably blame video games for that because, you know, cinematics and because they have a lot of them have really great stories in them. You just got to play them to get the story. Mm-hmm. But then now when it comes to books, I'm, I'm, I can actually sit here. I'll read a book. I'll get through about three pages and I'll be like, but actually like listening to it, I can absorb it and actually keep the information. I don't know how many times I'm sitting here reading a book and I'm like, I, I'll read, I'll read a sentence or, 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 and I'm like, what? Oh, I have to go back and reread the sentence because yeah. my brain just didn't like comprehend what I just said. Right. I passed my eyes over the word, but my brain didn't collect the, <laughs> the exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I just certain. I feel like certain people are more, uh, you know, audio centric than visual centric. Well, we have movies. We have movies for most books now, or TV shows. At but least, the movies so suck there. compared to the books most of the time because they have most to cut the time, yes. crap out of them. Yes. So, and it's usually good details that you're supposed to catch up on, and they're, and and their threads that tie together with something else later. Mm-hmm. I know that like music was a really important part of Addie's life. Yes. And I know they do mention like hearing songs and like it came up in a few chapters, but I feel like I would have expected there to be more, more about music. What I think I like about it is that I think. I, if if I correct me if I'm wrong, but there was a point where he composed something. He played a few. He played it a couple times, yes. and then he heard it. Someone someone else whistled well, it back to him later. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's and amazing. He, when he was when when they was marching with his unit in France, and they started singing it, he was like, <gasps> he's like, I know that. That's mine. <laughs> I, what? But um, yeah, them being. Said, she said that there was one piece that he got famous for. That he was yeah, famous for. That was, and it was called the letter, I think it was, if I recall correctly. But uh, no, that's with amazing them. <laughs> that you can with create them. something and then have it like come back to you like later. Wait a minute, what? Hey, huh? It's Without mine. even realizing it. Mm-hmm. But being good poles, they of course know their Chopin and uh, all that good stuff. Because I know they, there's there they where Adi gives a sort of concert on the ship. I think it was, and they mention all these composers. And of course, first is Chopin. So, outside of like figuring out a little bit about them pre-war, is there anything else that you think the book might have benefited from? Something that wasn't included. I I can't think of anything to be absolutely honest with you. And there were a few points. There was one point where, um, what was it? The, the historical narrator was talking about how they started putting people on the trains to send them to the camps. And the very next chapter was the one where Mila had, uh, um, what's, what was the kid's name? Felicia. Yeah, Felicia. For put on that train, it was like, oh no. <laughs> so, but thankfully, she because it was the kind of thing where it's like, Yes, I know the title is We Are the Lucky Ones, but were they lucky enough to all survive, not just... Right. Like, it's how lucky they were. Yeah. We're, we're just waiting uh, to we're get... putting this to the test, so I thought, you know, good on you for that. But yeah, that was that was a good chapter. No, I really can't think of anything that, you know, other than... My only, my only complaint was that uh, was um, I have to keep track of who, and it seemed like the, the characters could be interchangeable and in their situations. So. I agree. I thought the book would have like a reading guide, but I don't think this one had one. No, it doesn't. It does not. Doesn't? Let me see if it. I mean, one might exist, it's just not in this book. You want to see if I have one on my thing? A brave and mesmerizing debut. I mean, here's a reader's guide. Hang on. Uh, oh, here's questions. I don't know if we want questions or not. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, the Kurtz family was assimilated into Polish life before the war. What are some examples of that assimilation, and how do you think that helped or hindered the family's chances of survival? I'm not 
sure. I know that, <clears throat> I don't know who, who was it that was, or were they all trying to pass off as like Aryan? Or like a couple of them? Well, that's during the war. I and mean, this is before the war. I think that's where they're getting out there. Yeah, it says they were simulated into Pope's life before the war. What are some of the examples of that? And do you think it helped or hindered? I think no. it helped because they would have strategies to, um, like you said, hide the fact that they were Jewish and, you know, or at least not bring attention to it. Well, they gave him something else to focus on. I don't know if I can think of any other examples. Well, with the names, too, like I said, they don't use their actual Hebrew yeah, names. They right. just use. And I would assume they speak Polish out, outside the home, not Hebrew. I thought it was interesting that, like, they all knew so many languages. Mm -hmm. I finished the book last night and I jumped on Duolingo. <laughs> yeah. I started, like, trying to refresh on Portuguese and. Well, yeah. The, the well, the, the thing about Europe, though, is that you know most of the countries there are the size of our state. So if, like, you know, if we're, you know, and I don't know, you guys are in Florida, and say Alabama is not the country, right? You know, another language. Yeah, you got to learn. <laughs> yeah, that's why we got so much Spanish here, though. Yep. Right, but it's. I don't feel like it's respected. Not because of Alabama, though. I mean, I feel like yeah. all other countries no multiple languages and it's pretty much here that we're like yeah speaking no they, like. they no it's rhetoric they keep they the government helps with that they keep us that way mm -hmm. it's all it's about just, control it's just sad i think it is it's absolutely sad and it's disgusting like why would you not want to be able to communicate with more people like i don't know like mm -hmm. um arrogance Arrogance, yeah, I'm sure. Um, what other questions are there? What was your favorite character and why? Mila. I was, I'm torn between Addy and Mila. I mean, Addie's, Addie's a good pick, but I think I, for me, Mila is because she actually basically did what she had to do to save her daughter and, mm -hmm. and you know, telling her to go call somebody else mama, Wait, that's, that's got to be like, mm -hmm. but in order to save her life, to get her, you know, out of that situation, that was, well, like, I just I feel like a lot of uh, people wouldn't do that, and that's mm -hmm. upsetting. Like it takes takes guts and bravery. A lot of the things that she did, not just that situation. I mean, right. the amount of times that she was like questioned. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You know, obviously there was a reason for her being questioned, but um, I think one of the times she was like in like the prison for like four months or something. Four months, waiting for a reply from her, her freaking her employer. Well, how, well how, how does her employer night? Hey, where's Mila? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, but the bank was closed. Oh, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. I don't know. Um, I mean, so for me, like, obviously Mila did things that she had to do. Like, she was just mm -hmm. uh, very vigilant. But um, I felt like Addie just kept his good heart. I guess I would be able to relate close to Addie, but when it comes to favorite character, I have a lot of respect for Mila. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, Addie, Addie was definitely a. Uh, are you saying he kept a, a light-hearted approach to things? I mean, I guess it just it didn't. I mean, he didn't see the same things that they saw. Right. Uh, he did and get he out. didn't really have to deal with it in the same way. But just him, you know, going to Brazil and then what uh, 
Catherine was saying later on when she was retelling the story, she was just saying that, you know, she had been living in Brazil for however long and it had taken her years to learn the Portuguese that she did, but he learned English in a couple of weeks Yeah, because he wanted, like, he was just so, uh, well, when you know six or seven languages, I think it's easier to pick up on another one. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like it, learning, like, one or two languages, learning three or four, might, it might be get easier to actually to, to, to uh, get the, the, the structure of each language down. I mean, I, I, I can totally relate to that. I get that. But I also think that as you get older, language acquisition becomes more difficult. Not that it's impossible. You can still do it. Yeah, but like an old dog, new tricks. <laughs> But yeah, as the the younger you are, the more information you're able to hold on to. What I'm, I'm what I'm talking about in relation to Addy is just his his motivation to do that. He wanted to be close to Catherine. He wanted to be able to Caroline? communicate with sorry, Caroline. He wanted to be able to communicate with her, and he also wanted to be able to uh, write those letters. I guess did he write them in English? I don't know. Yes. Because he wanted to contact his family. Mm -hmm. So. Well, it's uh, hard to maintain hope for that long. Mm -hmm. I'll keep that in mind. Think mine would be either Genic or Helena. Helena? Um, hmm? I can't say I remember too much about her. Yeah, and it's probably just because I'm mixing her up with. Yep. Well, she's, she's the one who held the family together pretty much after the war, you know. Getting them into. Oh, uh, she was the strong protective one, wasn't she? Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Are you serious? I no. Yeah. I think she's... she she yeah, she changed the most. <laughs> oh, yeah. Over the course of the over the course of the story, so. And of course, there's a uh, saw on Nehuma as well, so. Yeah, Nehuma did it a lot. Yep. And I'm sure she did a lot of worrying, freaking not knowing where five kids are at. Also, there's one point where they had to leave the parents. That I think I forget where it was, and and it's like at the cafeteria where they were working. That's where it was. And Did Helena and Adam. Were that like, guys have yeah. So that's where they found them after the fact. Oh, right. Because they were hiding out there. Mm -hmm. So. That one guy. Nobody knows his name, huh? <laughs> I forget his name. Addy meets Alishka en route to Brazil. Did you find it strange that he would fall in love despite the circumstances? In what ways do you think Alishka and Addy's feelings for each other would have been similar or different had they met under more normal circumstances? Oh, of course. But the idea of finding love in, cer in these circumstances, I think that, that love will happen no matter what circumstances. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you have if like, not that? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And that's actually what helps drive you through certain things. So, yes. Uh, I think if they had met under other circumstances, maybe... Well, yeah, he wouldn't be so tied up with his family. Yeah. They, they probably right. would have gotten married. <clears throat> but, yeah, man, I just... No, I, if, if you're like, I want my family to be at my wedding, and then she's like, well, I want to get married now, what kind of... No, get the fuck out I of here, then. But it also sounds like Alishka was a little bit preoccupied with getting married. Like, what was that? So she was a little bit preoccupied with getting married. Mm -hmm. Like, That's you know, for some people, it's not even about marrying the person you love. It's about having a wedding and getting married and, like, planning the big party. And and it mm -hmm. kind of felt a little bit like it may have been like that. Not that she didn't love Addie. I'm sure she did. But <clears throat> it seemed like she was kind of wrapped up in the whole idea of the wedding and the party. and mm -hmm. Rich people. <laughs> I mean, because if you love the person you're going to be with them anyway, it doesn't matter if you get married now or like 10 years from now. I agree with that, but yeah. Why are you yoinking on, oh, the, sorry. on, on, the, on the cord? <laughs> sorry. Yanking the chain here. I'm attached. <laughs> Look. She's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, but I think, yeah, but good for them for realizing that it was just one of those wartime things and, you know, they went their separate ways and yeah. never heard of Alishka again. Kind of well, surprised me. The author interviewed her after the mm. fact, and she said she mentions. I don't know if this was in the acknowledgments or if it was in the author's note, but 
she mentions that, you know, even at 80 some years old, that her eyes still glowed when she talked about Addie. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Or so, not taken then. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I think I think in in that case, yeah, you know, let's just say, oh yeah, you you know you you're you know which in which in a way she's right, you know, he's you know constantly worrying about his parents. It's like, well, that's easy for you to say because your your mother's right there. You know, if you didn't have your mother, like if she was she was lost somewhere in Europe, you would probably you know feel something similar, but. That wasn't the way it worked out. Um, Jakob has been the love of Bella's life since she was a teenager, and yet not even he can comfort her when Bella learns of her sister and her parents' deaths. In the end, though, Bella turns the corner and is able to let Jakob back into her life, and being with him helps her to heal. Have you ever had a relationship with a friend or partner I was either damaged or strengthened by sharing a tough experience. I would say yes. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> um, what about you? I don't think I've gone through anything too dramatic yet. You don't think so? Hmm? You don't think so? Not to damage anything enough to be that big a deal. I mean, we've we've been strengthened by certain things, I I would agree. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, like, so what what are you thinking I mean, I think when it comes to death, uh, it's a weird thing, right? Because... I, originally, I would have thought that anybody that cared about me could probably try to comfort me. But I know that when my godfather passed away, um, I felt more drawn to people who knew my godfather versus people who I may have been really close to at that time. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I guess there was this sense of the people close to me just not being close to me at that moment just couldn't relate to what I was going through or just didn't understand or didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know her godfather. So I didn't, I couldn't, I couldn't share her Mm -hmm. loss. So you're saying that damaged us? No, I don't think that damaged us. But I think like the people who I felt helped me more were like previously just damaged relationships, but I felt like they still helped me during a difficult time. <clears throat> so I can relate to that. And I can, I can relate to Bella just feeling like mm-hmm. that Jacob, Jacob couldn't help her. I think, I think in terms of Jacob and Bella, I think what really brought her around was having you know, becoming pregnant herself and you know, they, continuing that life. Did they have Yosef and... It was the second kid. The, not Yosef, the second one. I thought. Ricardo? I can't remember what his name is. Could be. Yeah, because it was like Yosef and Felicia were kind of the same age-ish, right? Mm-hmm. But those were two different... I think their second kid was Ricardo. Yes, I think they had um, Joseph. Was it in Russia, or just before they left Poland? I can't remember. I don't know. Are you guys, Yusuf? Yusuf. Yusuf, yeah, or Yusuf. Or it's pronounced. I didn't read it. The, the, <laughs> the narrator said Yusuf. Okay, so, so I was like Yusuf because I worked with a Yusuf. I mean, I can see that name, I, and people did call him Joseph, and I'm like, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I I assumed that was like the translation yeah. for Joseph. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Helena is the most rebellious of the five court siblings, and follows only one set of rules her own. In what ways do you think Helena's personality affects the family's fate throughout the war? 
Was it like, uh, well, what will what will mom think, or what will Aunt Aunt Hel Helena think? <laughs> uh, I mean, I really don't. I can't imagine that that her rules did much throughout the. No, but I mean, I imagine that there were some of them because, like, when you live in those kinds of extreme circumstances, there has to be moments where you're like, I fucking give up. I just give up. I give up. I'm over this. I'm done with this. Let them take me. I don't want to keep fighting. I don't want to keep hiding. I don't want to keep living like this. Right. And Helena seems like the one that would have been like, no, we're doing this. We're still going to do this. Yeah. We're going to get you out of here. You can't give up. Mm -hmm. Kind of thing. So I feel like she just kept everybody going. Yes. Especially in Italy when they were hiking over the Italian Alps. When they were talking about that, about 12 hour treks every day. Just... Mm -hmm. <laughs> and while pregnant. Yes, and while pregnant. Nope. And I like the fact that they use that, they use that later on. It says, well, I did this while I was pregnant. You can do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Let's see. When Poland falls in September 1939, Germany takes over the West and Russia the East. Yannick, who finds himself on the Eastern side, refuses to accept Soviet citizenship, thereby labeling himself a resistor. Why do you think Yannick felt so strongly about holding on to the nationality of his home country, despite the fact that technically it no longer existed? Would you have done the same? What does your national identity mean to you? Well, if it's if it ends up being radicalized, then I mean, what the hell? But it's a sense of pride to a lot of people. I mean, right now, I wouldn't want to actually. Like, yeah, I'm American. <sighs> I mean, <laughs> what am I, what are you supposed to do in that situation? But if 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 you're overtaken in a hostile manner, you're not going to want to be all like, yeah, well, I'm Soviet now. <laughs> Screw you guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, but did he know that that was going to paint a target on him? I don't no, think he did. No, not at the time. No. He... Absolutely not. <clears throat> I found out much after the fact that, that that's what happened. But now, if some shit like that was to happen, I think <laughs> I'd be so like, I oh, think, well, I think, you know, it would be the same situation. Would I, like, resist not thinking I would be made a target? Yeah, absolutely. If I wasn't going to be made a target. Right. But, like, after the fact, knowing that that could potentially happen, I think that would change. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It really depends. It's it's that's that's a lot of circumstances involved there, man. It's right. kind of hard to tell. <laughs> like, a lot of variables. And the thing I could see happening is, you know, okay, when the first Soviets he gets put away, gets put away, and you know, you know, he comes back to Poland after the war, and then there's these, you know, Polish things. Say, oh, well, you signed up for Soviet citizenship. Does that mean you're a dis you know? So either way, you know. Damned if you do. Yeah. Damned if you don't. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Although the author does not deliberately draw parallels to other major events in history or to today's current events, some readers have commented on what they see as shared circumstances. What similarities, if any, did you Notice. Shared circumstances? Mm -hmm. Yep. Between my characters? Mm -hmm. And what's going on today? Mm. I don't want to. I mean, I feel like they were dehumanized, and that's definitely something that's happening right now. The wow. fact that hate crimes are on the rise right now is upsetting. Mm -hmm. Why is that still a thing this day and age? I don't understand why we haven't learned as humanity from mm -hmm. our past bullshit. But, I mean, we I, all saw idiocracy, right? No, I didn't see that. You know, I, I didn't did. see that. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's the your list. Yeah, that, yeah, that's your list, too. Um, I tried. I showed her the first uh, the the intro to it, and she she went on Twitter and was like, "My husband just gave me the worst anxiety ever." <laughs> I don't know if I can sit through that. But, um, but that's how humanity doesn't learn is we actually just keep reading the dumb ones. 
Um, I feel like I just, I kind of wish that people would understand that, you know, sometimes being a law abiding citizen is, is not the right like, thing. No, but it's almost like comes from a place of privilege, right? If you have everything you need, then what do you need to break the rules for? It's mm -hmm. when, when you, you don't, what is the playing field's just not level mm -hmm. that people got to do what they got to do to survive. And mm -hmm. Like, if there was just at least a little bit of empathy for that instead of being like, well, if you don't want to get in trouble, no one do this. Nah, screw you, bro. Well, I, th I think um, Addy is probably the best uh, example of what's going on today in the sense of, you know, we have all these migrants from Africa trying to go by boat to Europe, and, you know, Europe obviously does not want them. Yeah, okay, so what happens now? That's what happened to Addy. It's like, you know, um, where where'd they want to go? I forget where they were going. And then that place refused and said, oh, we'll go to South America and Brazil. And they weren't accepting, you know. Oh, oh that's what it was. And it, was, and it took so long that their, their visas, visas ran out before they got there. Yeah. Oh, that's know? anxiety, too. <laughs> that's what I mean, yeah. And it's like, and it's, and it's not like the, he's a criminal or anything. You know, he's trying right. to save his life, you know. From being, you know, taken into a prison, a, a concentration camp or a work camp. So. And that's that's what's upsetting about what's going on right now is that the peop these people are actually refugees from other shittier countries, and right. they come here for the American dream. And now we're destroying that. Mm -hmm. And and I, I I hate the fact that I'm saying we because I live in this damn country. Mm -hmm. Be like, ugh, people come here for a better life, and mm -hmm. we're making it worse for them. Mm -hmm. Sad. You know, there was a quote that I had taken yesterday, so I was like, oh, man. Oh. Or, or like uh, in the book where they finally get to Brazil and, you know, they're they're on that island and such. So it's just like, well, they could just as easily send you back. <laughs> right. But, you know, and, after all that. And that's that. It, well, what you're talking about circumstances in the book and what's going on right now is that people are still running from those shitty countries, even right. knowing that there's this is happening in our country, just mm -hmm. so they can risk it and and hopefully get mm -hmm. through, because right. of how bad it is over there. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so it was like it was Jakob. They were talking about Jakob and Bella, and it says. If all goes well in due time, they'll be allowed to emigrate to the United States, to America. The word sings when they speak it of freedom, of opportunity, of the chance to start a new America. Sometimes it sounds too perfect, like the last note of a, noctur a nocturne that hovers, suspended in time before inevitably growing faint and disappearing. But it's plausible, they remind themselves. Their sponsorship, they hoped, would soon be approved. Mm -hmm. And then all that would be required were three visas. Jacob and Bella talk frequently about the idea of their son, should they plan their plan come to fruition, growing up American, about what it would mean to introduce Victor to a lifestyle, a language, a culture completely foreign. Surely he'll be better off, they say, even though he has they have no concept of what growing up American entails. Mm -hmm. But there's just, you know. It's got to yeah. be better than this. <clears throat> And to think that people still have that thought, that idea, and then they get here and they're like, wait, what? I mean, didn't you say that you talked to someone recently that had just come over from somewhere and you were like, why? Why do you want to come here? And he was like, even here, it's still better than my country. Yeah, it was uh, someone I was driving for Uber. Mm -hmm. But you came here during this crap going on? He goes, yep. <laughs> he was just, yep. Mm -hmm. Because it's still better than over there. Yep. Uh, it's, oh. <sighs> Why we gotta make it harder on people, man? We're all just people. Yeah, we're all human beings. Doesn't matter what color, language you speak. Who cares? Let them in. But um, I guess we could probably go over final thoughts. Yeah, let's and do that. Ratings. Well, there's one more question. If you want to. All right. That's good. There are several examples in the book of strangers who put their lives at risk to help the Quartzes, such as the Gorskis. That's they him. They saw Nahoma into hiding, the mother superior who allows Felicia into her convent, and Herr Dan who vouches for Helena's Argan identity. 
What would you have done had you been in these characters? Because we already answered that, it looks like, I think. Yeah. What motivates people, what motivates people to put themselves on the line despite the deadly risks of getting caught to help people in need? I was looking at it this way. I'd rather know that I at least did a little bit mm -hmm. to help someone versus... And even if I die for it, I mean, it's better than living the life that we're freaking living if, if that's what we're going to be dealing with. Now, let me ask you, because here, here's where it, it uh, becomes like a dilemma for me, right? Like when you think of answering that question, are you just considering yourself? Or are you also thinking about your family? That's a good question, too. That's a good question. Because if it's putting everybody else at risk, too, then... Maybe not. And that's that's really where it, yes. it becomes. But if it's just me, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. I agree. If it was just me, I feel like the type of person I am, I want to do what's right. And I believe in humanity. I believe in morality more so mm -hmm. than just being lawful. Uh, because lawful does not equal moral. Right. And, uh, and so I feel like if it was just about me, if I was the only person I had to consider, then yes, I would do whatever I needed to, to help people. Chaotic good. <laughs> so, I, I don't remember what I am. I think I might be... I thought you were chaotic neutral, because you had like this... Maybe, maybe. Yeah, I'd sometimes I'll do shitty again. things, sometimes I'll do good things. But it <laughs> really depends on the situation. I thought I was lawful something. Oh, oh. So I don't know. I'd have to look it up again, because I just looked it up recently, because I was really sure. curious. Um, but... But yeah, like as a as a mother, yeah, putting your son gets, at risk that's that different. That gets turned than, off. You know, yeah. after you have a kid, it's no longer well. What about me? It's what about my kid? Like that's always you're gonna the do what's best for them, not for yourself. So, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that's a, yeah. You, you won't until you're until in that situation, right, exactly. unfortunately. Yeah. And of course, the kid is seeing this, and it's like, is this how you want your child to learn? About how the world works. That you now, know. if I was to step up and lead some sort of crazy shit, resistance or whatever, would you divorce me for it? What? No, I'm saying like we'll separate that from my family. I still love you, but go away. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Well, at least our names are still separate. <laughs> <laughs> I never took Jones last day. They'll never trace her. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's, that's I don't know. That's all him. Henry, who's that? Uh, but the, uh, the logic, I think, is that, uh, you know, oh, well, I'm safe for now, but eventually they'll come for you as well. Right. And then who's going to send there for you? Man, this book's just full of anxieties. Mm -hmm. I just, I, like, I remember so clearly, and, and it's sad because this burger place doesn't exist anymore, but there was this burger place that I used to go to all the time because they, they had awesome cheese fries. And so one, one day for lunch, and this is when, like, the rioting in Egypt had just started, so this was a few, a few years ago, but I remember walking in to get my burger and on the TVs, they were showing footage of all the rioting that was taking place. And I just remember being like, wow, these people obviously feel super strong about what's happening here. Like, they were all in the streets. They were all fighting. They were, like, getting gassed and, and shot, and they were mm -hmm. surrounded by tanks. And, and, you know, in my head, I was just thinking, like, would Americans fight in the same way? You know, it wasn't really anything that I had to consider. Because, yeah, we've seen, like, little protests up until that point, but not on that scale. And I just remember being, like, do Americans have that in them? And I just, I really wasn't sure. And I guess now we're finding out. So. The, the weird part that what I, what I think is the difference between us and them is that they used Twitter as their main source of information and they were using each other's information versus what the media was telling them. Mm -hmm. Like we actually have the media controlling so much of our stuff that, that it's going to keep half of us under reps. And that's the sad part. That's that's what I that's what I think, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm sorry I blamed the book for the anxieties because those anxieties are coming from humanities and the way we treat each other. It wasn't the book's fault. You just brought it to light. <laughs> I don't want to blame the, the book. The play is the thing in which to catch the conscience of the king. 
It's what's going on here. So, but uh, what would you rate the book? I would, uh, I would give it a four. I mean, I would give it a five. I don't know what would have changed that for me though, but is it a four or five? <sighs> Stop screwing around. <laughs> Three is you liked it. Four is you loved it. Five is it was amazing. Not even a five. Not even a five. It was amazing. Now, and that's not me enjoying it to the fact that it was absolutely amazing. That's me giving the author credit for creating that book out of what she had. Mm -hmm. That that's amazing to me. I didn't absolutely enjoy it and be like, hey, I love this story, but it was just with the information she had, I could, yeah, I'll give it a five. I agree. Did that change when you realized that it was based on mostly truth? Um, after the author's note, I was like, damn. Because she was like, this is my family. This is, you know, I did this, 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 and this to, to get this story. It is a really good story, and it's sad that it's mm. true. But it could have been told in a worse, like, in a, in a different way, and it would have been a worse book. But it was done well. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my take on it. I think I'd give it a five. You think? Okay. Are you sure? Yeah. You, you think? Mm -hmm. All right. So is that your final answer? <laughs> yes. No lifelines? <laughs> no. 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 Okay. We're fine. I mean, like, the only complaint I have is just that sometimes it was hard to follow, like, what character we were talking about. But now that I know there was a family tree in there. <laughs> that, was, that was your bad. <laughs> so. so, yeah. I think more people should read it. I'm sorry? I think more people should read it. Yeah. Yes. All the ones that don't believe the Holocaust is real. The fact that that's even a thing. Uh, that, that, that's not going to make any difference. I don't yeah, think. I guess. It's just all fiction. So sad. So sad. So. I happened to come across a video like while we were reading this on Facebook of... Um, a twin, a twin that was in one of the concentration camps, and she was called like a Mandalay or something, Doctor Mandalay. I don't, maybe I'm saying his name wrong, but Dr. Mangala. Yeah, she was. She was referred to as one of the Mangala twins, and uh, so it's like a 15 minute interview with her, and she's talking about like you know her and her sister, and how she never saw her mother again, what she went through, and um, it was just really intense. Right. So, like, they had no idea what they were being injected with. None. Oh, is that the video you sent me? Yeah, yeah I didn't watch okay. it. Okay. <clears throat> and again, refer referring back to um, Patient HM and Brain on Fire to a much lesser extent. Yeah, they point back, well, the Nazis did this experimentation. And it's like, well, <laughs> yeah, but. That's not to say it's the most ethical, most ethical thing to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, so at any rate, um, I think I would give it a three and a half and round it up to a four. So, like I said, I I would I wanted to feel a bit more emotional attention to the characters, and yeah, I do. You know, I you know was um, exultant when the family got back together and such. And I think that's why. I strongly suspect that's why the book has such good ratings. Like you look at Goodreads, I think it's like um, um, four four point three seven or something like that. Which to me, is like that's super really super rating. high. Yeah, four point four. So, but like I said, I'm not saying it's a bad book. Like I said, I just I just don't see the. Uh, I get it. I get it. Um, now I'm wondering if there is the reason why there isn't much backstory to each of the characters is because the author didn't have that much of a backstory. Well, when I mean, you have most of the accounts she was getting from their kids and not necessarily, you know, them. Yeah. Well, also too, when you have this much material to work with already, 
that's pretty much a you know, <laughs> yeah. you know it's like and, so so Tom wants a prequel. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. this is like a prequel. <laughs> I think, if it, I think if it was like a 50 to 100 pages longer, I think it would have been a better book, but that's me. Okay. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Again, it's not a, I'm not saying it's a bad book. It's a very good book, but like I said, I just would have preferred you know, a, a build up to who the characters were and how to differentiate between like differentiate between them. Rather than saying, oh, they, he's an engineer and he's a musician and he's, you know, something else. Um, all right, so we got two fives and a four. four. Um, so the book for next month has already been selected, and we're going to be reading The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee, I believe. I don't have the book in front of me, I believe that's who it's by. Let me just double check. Okay. Um, this is the second try for this one, if, if I recall correctly, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yes. Or from down. Oh, there anyway. one. Yep, Mackenzie Lee. Wow. And I guess it's like the first in a series, but I think it's like, even though it's a series, I don't think it necessarily um, has to be read that way. Like, it's about the Montague siblings. So the second book is called, like, The Woman's Guide to, or The Lady's Guide to Something in Petticoats. I don't know. <clears throat> Which I didn't realize it's about it was a his series. sister. Yeah. So. That's why everything is a series in certain genres anymore. But, I see. Like sci fi and fantasy, but that's another story entirely. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I guess we have to set up another poll soon. So, Tom, whenever you have your. Yep. I'll, I'll work you know. on that. Um, all right, guys. So, that was our discussion. On We Were the Lucky Ones by Georgia Hunter. If you're watching this after the fact, um, just know that we, Libre Libra, has a Patreon, patreon.com slash Libre Libra, where you can sign up to get your own custom bookmark and join us on the book discussions via, via Google Hangout. And there's a few other perks happening over there, so you can go check that out. Um, thanks for joining us. And hang out with us again. And see you next time. Bye.